Stephen Kelly here from Software Survival and today we're going to move on to our third episode of navigational training. Hopefully so far you've got some value from it and you're learning some new skills. If you are learning new skills just let me know in the comments. Uh, so what we're going to talk about today is map margin information. So what this is, is if you all pull out your maps now, what you've got in your houses or what you've got in front of you, if you can look online. The map marginal information is that sheet on the right hand side of your map. If you're using military maps, we have the map margin information at the bottom. So yeah, my name's Stephen Kelly and yeah, I am the owner of Southwest Survival and that is it. So the aim of this lesson today is to teach you the important information to be found in your map marginal information. The definition of a map, this is what I covered in our first episode. I went over it briefly, but I thought, you know what, I thought I'll write it down for you so you can take it in and write it down yourself so you actually know what a map is. So here is the definition of a map. A map is a bird's eye, sometimes topographical view of a piece of land drawn to scale on an easily handled piece of paper. And that is a definition of a map. So as you can see here, here's a map and here's a photo. So how it works is we take a photo of a piece of land and we're drawing it to scale on an easily handled piece of paper and that is how our map's made. So the M726 series of maps cover the whole of Great Britain in 240 maps. So we start off at the southwest of England and we finish off at the northwest of Scotland covering the whole of Great Britain. Map title, this will be the, the name of the map and the area that the map covers. So this is things you need to look out for. If you're going out on Dartmoor, you need to make sure you've got a Dartmoor map. You don't want to be picking up a Brecon map. Do you see what I'm saying? If you're going up to Scotland, all right, say up in the Isle of Skye, you don't want a, a Ben Nevis map. So this is what you're checking first, your map title. You want to make sure you've got the right map. CV sheet in addition, all right, we call this the SSE box, all right? So this uniquely identifies a map in the military, uh, we must identify the series, the sheet and edition, and in civilian street as well. If you're using a civilian map, you want to make sure you've got the right SSE, you're using the right series, sheet and edition for the area you're going out in. Different series are de designed to meet different needs in different areas of the world. The series you will be using is called the M726. Series M726 covers the whole UK and consists of 204 maps. So that's what we want to look at. We want to make sure we've got the right series sheet in addition for the area we're going out in. So as you can see here, this is the British National Grid. And we start off from the southwest of England and we finish right at the top, the northwest of Scotland. And as you can see here, we're broken down into 100 kilometer squares. And if you were to write a six figure grid on a map, if you were to write all the numbers it's going to take ages to work out. So that's why we break it down into 100 kilometers squares and we put letters in. So grid, grid references is going to be a future lesson. And if you want to write a six figure grid, you need a full grid reference. So this way the letters come into it. So if we're down in the southwest now, the letters we're going to be using is Sierra Whiskey, Sierra X-Ray, uh, Sierra Sierra or Sierra Romeo. They're the types of uh, maps we're going to be using. So if I'm going to be given a six figure grid and I'm on Dartmoor, my first letter I'm going to give first is Sierra Whiskey, then the six figure grid. If I'm up in Scotland near, let's say, Land's End, Cape Wrath, Dennis, this the, the letters I'm going to give before my six figure grid reference is November Charlie. So just make sure you know what this means. All right? But like I said, we're going to go into this on our grid reference lesson in a few episodes. But that's how we break our uh, national grid. Start from the bottom of the southwest and finish up. And all, the, all, all we've done is put a graph over Great Britain and we've broke it down into 100 kilometer squares. So that's where we start from. So the sheet series designator box. So this is what I was talking about earlier on. This is how you uniquely identify a map, your SSE box. And what it gives you in there is your series, it gives you your sheet number, and it gives you the addition. And that's all there is. This uniquely identifies the map you're going to be working on. So as you can see now, this is an Ordnance Survey map. And if you want to find your title of your map, it is in the top right hand side straight away. So this map is a Perth map. All right, and that's the title of the map. As you can see there, all right, that's the title of the map and it's a Land Ranger 58. The bottom corners there, the top left, 
on the bottom right, this is where your SSE box is, your series sheet in addition. This is the what uniquely identifies that map, which I keep raving on to you. Yeah, yeah. Your SSE box, your series sheet in addition. So the series for this map is going to be the M726. The sheet number is going to be 58 and the addition is 7-GSGS. That uniquely identifies this map. And we also need to know the scale, the series sheet and addition. What we, what, what we also need to know is the scale. Why we need to know that is measuring the distance. So we also need to know the scale of the map we are using. Scale can be expressed in four ways. It can be expressed as a ratio, e.g. 1 in 50 or 1 to 50,000. You can use the scale lines. So if you look at the bottom of your maps now, you should have scale lines on if you're measuring from A to B which I will show you on another lesson how to actually measure distance on a map using the scale lines. You can do it in words, e.g. for example, two centimetres is one K or two centimetres equals to one kilometre. This is how we express it and as a fraction, one in 50 or one dash 50. This is how we express and how we explain the scale on a map, four different ways. But most of the time, all right, we're always going to use, oh, my computer's having a bit of a glitch here, it's having a meltdown. Most of the time, we're going to probably be using the scale line, which I'm going to teach you on your lessons, and as a ratio, that's what I'll be referring to all the time when I'm speaking to you. So the maps you'll be using are at a scale of 1 in 50. So when I'm teaching these lessons now, I will be using a 1 in 50. So what that means, a 1 in 50,000 equates to 2 centimetres on these maps. So basically, two times 50,000 centimetres or one kilometre on the ground. So how I teach people this, right? let's keep it to one in 50,000. So this is how you keep it in your head. Right? If you're measuring distance, every two centimetres you measure on a one in 50,000 map equates to one kilometre. So here's how we can work it out. I've got one in 50, so we're going to express it in one in 50. All I want to do now is move me dash over. And get rid of me last two zeros. That makes 500. How many 500s can I fit in a thousand? Two. So I know that's two centimeters to 1k. If I was using a one in 25,000 map, I move my decimal point over, get rid of me two zeros, it makes it 250. How many 250s can I fit in a thousand? Four. So I know every four centimeters measured on a one in 25,000 map equates to one kilometer. So that's how we work out. So I'll refresh it on this now. We're going to be working on one in 50,000 map to work out the centimetres when I'm measuring. Move my decimal point over. Get rid of my two zeros. And then it's going to be one in 500. How many 500s can I fit in a thousand? Two. So that means I, every time I measure two centimetres on a one in 50,000 map, that equates to one kilometre on the ground. Put another way of each, each kilometre on the ground is reduced 50,000 times to become two centimetres on a map. So whatever whatever way works for you, but there are some ways how you can work out how scale works. So like I said, put another way, each kilometre on the ground is reduced to 50,000 times to become two centimetres on the map. So that's how, you, that's how you work it out. So here on the map, if you're looking at your maps now, that's how you find what scale your map is. So the maps we're going to be working on, what I hope you're working on as well, is a 1 in 50,000 map. There's no problem with using a 1 in 25. There's no problem whatsoever. You're getting a lot more information on a 1 in 25. And also at the bottom here is your scale line to measure your distance. As you can see here. Right, what we're going to go into now is contour interval. We also need to know the contour interval on, on a map as this will show us the slope or the steepness of the ground. So when you're looking at your map now, you're going to have loads of contours on there. Loads of little orange lines. So the contour interval on the map will be on the top left. And as you can see here, the contour interval is 10 metres. So that's a standard what we have in a 1 in 50,000 map. Each contour is 10 metres in height. So if you're climbing up a hill, you can work out how high the hill is by counting each contour interval. And then the thicker brown line or the thicker orange line is the contour interval of 50 meters. But that's where you can find it. Contours are a 10 meter vertical interval. So every 10 meters is a contour. And as you can see, the thicker brown line always shows you at 50 meters. The last piece of the information on your map 
is grid magnetic angle. All right, the last piece of this information we need from the map margin is the grid magnetic angle. And I'll show you up here on your information. So the grid magnetic angle is 89 mils west of grid north in 99 at the center of the sheet. Annual change is about two mils east. GMA is going to be another lesson which I'll go through with you, but this is just showing you information on the map. And as you can see down here, you can get more information on the map as well. Here's the technical information. I'm not going to go too much into this now, but this is where you find in your GMA, this is where you find in your scale, your data of your map, so on and so forth. So summary, what we've covered today is the definition of a map, map title, series sheet in addition, scale, contour interval, and GMA. But I want to teach you something that quick now, all right? There's something what we teach the military, and it's a new monitor called DVAGs, all right? So write down in your notebooks now, down the bottom of the, down the bottom of your notebook, D. D stands for data stroke datum. So the first thing you do when you pick up your map, you're going to check the data, the sheet title. If you're going on Dartmoor, you want to make sure you've got A, Dartmoor map. So that's what you're checking. Also, you want to check your datum of the map. And if you're using the GPS, you want to make sure whatever datum is used on the map is in conjunction with your GPS. So that's what we're checking there. V is value. So we've talked about it on here, your contour interval, your contour value. This is just a new monarch we teach in the military, value. So you want to check your maps for the contour value or the contour interval. Uh, if you're working on one in 50,000, each contour interval, is uh, your contour value is going to be 10 metres. If you're working on a 1 in 25, they've changed now. Uh, 1 in 25 contour intervals are now 5 metres. So you need to check this. So if you're going up a hill, you want to know the height of the hill. If you're always thinking that the contour interval is 10 metres, but you're actually working on a 1 in 25, it's 5 metres. And you're not doing your... You're not checking it properly. The hill's going to be a lot shorter than what you thought it was. If you're working on Norwegian maps, the contour interval is 20 metres. But if you're thinking of, as a British map, you're thinking that it's 10 metres. The hill, what you've got to, what you've planned in your route, is double the height than what you thought it was going to be. So this is why you need to check your contour interval. Next part of DVAGs is A for age. Before you go on the ground, you want to go on the ground with the most up-to-date map because things change on the ground. You might have a new village built up on the ground. You might have new buildings and so on and so forth. So when you go on the ground, you want to make sure you've got the most up-to-date map. G for GMA, which we talked about on here. And S for scale, which we talked about on here as well. But that's a new monarch we use, DVAGs, all the time. Yeah, hopefully you got some good value from that. Let me know what you think in the comments. And please, like I always ask, please subscribe to my channel. I'm, I'm just trying to grow my channel, offer out value to all you. Uh, subscribe, like, comment, share. Have friends and family who might benefit from this video. But like I said, thank you very much for tuning in. Uh, peace out and have a good day.